What we're now going to look at is something slightly more complicated, and that is uh, fetching data into a class so we can use it uh, within a class and, and make use of methods within that class. And in fact, the constructor property uh, of a class, a constructor method of a class, is probably um, going to be you know useful here. So, why would we want to do this? Well, what we're going to be doing in this video is creating a class that holds the properties that we expect to be returned from this query. Then with the constructor function, we're going to create a new property or assign the value of a property called entry. And that's going to form a sentence for us. So for example, Alex posted and then the message that Alex posted or Billy posted and the message that Billy posted. And then within the while loop, we can actually echo that entry out. Now this short example just sort of demonstrates how you can sort of keep your logic of, of structuring what you need to away from your while loop because things could get a little bit messy if you're outputting things within your while loop. Uh, you might want to keep generic functionality. You might want a generic class to handle um, the outputting of, of data from your database. So this will allow you to do that. So let's take a look at how this might work. Well, at the moment, we've just got our query here and nothing else. So um, usually what we would do, and we'll just start to write the code out here, is while r equals and um, say query fetch, that will do a default fetcher associative array. And then we go ahead and just uh, output content here. Now we won't do that for now, but what we will do is we'll use the set fetch mode method uh, to define how we want this to be fetched and then we need to provide another property to this method which is the class that we want this to work with so in here we'll go ahead and do that so set fetch mode now the reason I've commented that is we won't do that just now what we'll do now is go ahead and we'll create our class and I'm gonna call this guest book entry so I'll call this guest book entry now this would or almost always be located elsewhere and be included in. We're doing a lot on this page at the moment, so structuring your code like this on one single page isn't a good idea. This would most likely be in a connect file and this would most likely be in its own class file that you would you know, require in or, or, or however you're requiring in classes. But for now, we'll put it all on one page just to make it you know, a little bit easier to read. So what we need to do here is we need to create four public um, properties and um, in fact what we'll do is for now we might want to go ahead and yeah we'll, we'll do four. So we'll create four, we won't include ID but we'll include all of the other properties that we would find in our database. So that is name, message and posted and I'm going to create an additional property down here and that I'm going to call that entry. So entry is going to be um, something like Alex posted and then the message here. So that's going to be a string and that's going to be, you know, how that's going to be how that looks. So um, let's go ahead and just, we won't do anything in this for now. We'll go ahead and we'll set the fetch mode and we'll see how that syntax looks. Now in this case it will be query set fetch mode and then in here what we want to do is set the actual fetch mode because we haven't defined that that's going to be fetch class and because we fetch the class now we want to define the class name that we want these properties to be uh, included in and that's going to be guest book entry so the class that we've already created so what's going to happen now is when the query is executed we'll get the field names back and for each loop of this when we do a fetch the properties here will be the same as the properties that we have in our database. So there'll be an additional property added, which will be ID. We haven't included that here, but that will be available. So let's go ahead and just do a print R on R to see how that looks, just so we can sort of get an idea of what's going on here. Okay, so this is a little bit odd. So let's go ahead and just echo some pre-tags around this. And we'll be able to see what this has actually done and then it might make a little bit more sense okay so you can see now that we've got the guest book entry object for each of the records so remember we have two records in our database the first guest book entry object has name message posted entry which is the pro other property that we created within our object which is empty and we've got id like i mentioned earlier this has automatically created an id property uh, we could define it here if we wanted to so we could say id like that and that will just jump to the top of the list 
So we've got this entry property. Now, what do we want this to do? Well, we want to implement a constructor inside of our um, class. So we say public function, and this is a magic method called construct. Um, so this will be run as the class is instantiated. So the class will be instantiated each time these um, these fetch are, are, are run. Um, so what we can say here is we can say this entry equals, and then we make up the string that we want to um, put this this value as. So as I've said, it's going to be name posted and then the message. So in here we can say message. So this is going to say Alex posted uh, test and Billy posted and whatever the other, another test or something. So now when we go ahead and refresh, you can see that the entry is now sort of using the values within the class and actually constructing this sort of entry here. So why is this of any use? Well, now down here, what we can do is instead of printing R on that object, which obviously to a user we wouldn't want to do, we can now just echo R entry. We don't need to do anything else in here. And what that's going to do is if we append a break onto it, is it's going to take the entry that we constructed within this class based on the properties that we created and it's going to go ahead and it's going to output what we created within the class. So if you look at this from the point of view where you can just do anything you want within a class, it doesn't matter. There's there's endless amounts of things you can do within a class. This is only a very basic example. It will save you having to do all of your logic or anything here and it also allows for the the, a brilliant reuse of code. You could create a generic object that did things from your database data. Um, you could use, you know, use this generic functionality to stop having to repeat code. So this way, uh, working this way with fetching the data into a class and then outputting like this um, sticks with, you know, a really good pattern of, of development where you're not going to have to reuse a lot of your code. So um, yeah, that's how you fetch data. Uh, from your database into a class and then how we output a simple ent entry that we've just built up within our construct magic method.